Hey guys, welcome to TBM's A New Year, A New Me. One of the reasons we're doing this webinar is because come time this year, come the end of the year, we are exhausted, we feel like we're running on empty fumes and we're so busy trying to wrap up the end of our work year as well as start to focus on how much time we're going to spend with family and when and where that we get so consumed about dispersing our energy in those areas that we actually don't take enough time to focus on our goals and reflecting on the year we've had. And this is really a time when we need to reflect on the year we've had. We need to take time to make goals for the new year, see where we might have fallen short this year, and make plans and provisions for that. So TBM's got an ebook called Seven Steps to Creating a Life-Changing Breakthrough. And that is what this webinar is really based on today. And those seven steps are really a catalyst for change in really taking control of your future and also leading yourself. Now, those of you who are familiar with TBM will know that we are a leadership development and empowerment company. And leadership doesn't mean getting followers. It's not a title. It's not a job. Leadership is about being able to lead yourself so that you can contribute more to the lives of others. That's really what it's about. And so when we talk about a new year, a new me, we want to talk about the power of choice. So those of us who have so those of us who, who have experienced that time in our life where we are overwhelmed and we know there's something more, we know that change is necessary, we just don't know how to get there. And we may have had challenging childhoods, challenging pasts, or we might be challenged in our present circumstances. We need to make a choice to raise our standards. We need to make a choice to persevere. And really, it's that decision to raise your standards and level up. It really makes a difference in people who are successful and people who are unsuccessful. So the power of choice is our first step in creating a life-changing breakthrough. And if you think of this, people who have inspired us all around the world, people like Oprah, people like Tony Robbins, people like Nelson Mandela, Princess Diana, it was a decision, a choice to raise their own standards. And that's what inspires us as human beings. It's when we see leaders who, despite their circumstances, decide to step up in their own life. So there was a time in my life where I was just really overwhelmed by past trauma, as well as why I couldn't overcome that trauma. And instead of going on a journey of personal development, I went on a journey of victim mentality where I blamed everybody else. I was so angry and I really went down into a spiral of depression and substance abuse. And what I realized at some point was there had to be more to the pain that I'd experienced in my life. There had to be a bigger reason. Now, I'm not saying that I believe bad things happen for a reason. But I do believe that when we come to the decision to take control of our lives, to step up and to take our power back, that bringing meaning to our pain and our painful past, that is a step in the right direction. And that empowers us to really take control of the narrative so that we start to write the rest of our story. Now, when we talk about the power of decision to raise our standards and to create a better life, for ourselves. We've all had those moments where we get so motivated by the pain that we've experienced that we say, this is it, I've made the decision, I'm never going back there. And what we sometimes don't realize, anybody who set a New Year's resolution and not succeeded in the New Year's resolution or goals will remember this in the past, is that when your why isn't strong enough, when your reason isn't strong enough for going after a goal, it's very easy to give up the rewards of that goal. So some of us might have things like, I want to lose five kilos in the new year, you know, because I'd like to wear a pair of jeans. Now, it sounds like a nice goal and it sounds like a specific goal, but the problem with that goal is the why isn't strong enough. It's not a life-changing driving force and being able to create a strong reasoning for your goal and why you're going after that decision is really what makes the difference in when you are faced with obstacles, do you persevere or do you give up? So why is our driving force of change? So things to establish your why's, once you've got 
the decision. You've made your choice to level up in your life and take control of your narrative and your destiny. Creating your strong why is essential. And in order to do that, you want to ask yourself some self-reflecting questions. For example, why is it important to me that I achieve this? This is one of the most powerful questions we can ask ourselves. Now, I recommend doing a seven levels deep exercise where you basically ask yourself why it's important to you over and over and over until you come to a base answer, a core answer that really speaks to your soul. So for example, if I said, I really want to have a successful company, why is it important to me to have a successful company? It's important to me to have a successful company because I'd like to have independence over my life. Why is it important for me to have independence over my life? So that I'm able to live a full life where I'm able to provide for my family. So as you can see, just by those questions, asking myself that question over and over again, there's a deeper meaning to why you want what you want. Now, many of us will set goals starting with a superficial want. So it will be, I want to lose weight, I want to make more money, I want to get a certain job. But all of those wants have much deeper meanings to us. And when we understand why that superficial goal essentially is so important, we actually discover our essential goal. And that's going to help you when things are challenging, when things are tough, you can look at your core why and go forward with that. Once we've established our why, so once you have aligned your soul with your deep, meaningful why, why you're going after this goal, why you want to make the decision to level up, why you want to take control of your narrative, why you want to lead your destiny, is we need to create smart goals. Now, any of us who've made goals, again, I'm going to bring up New Year's resolutions, we make those goals at the beginning of the year, this is what I'm going to do, and as soon as our energy flails or we have a little hiccup in the road, we often want to give up. And often what we haven't done is we've created a, a goal, but we haven't created a SMART goal. Now the difference between a goal and a SMART goal is just a goal is like a dream. So it's like something you wish is going to happen. You put it down on paper, I want this to happen, or I'm going to X, Y, and Z. It's still a wish. And until we make that a SMART measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound goal. It's not SMART. And so that is what a SMART goal stands for. It's a specific goal. So we want to make sure that we're very specific with what we're trying to achieve. Otherwise, it makes the goal too big. So saying something like, I'd like to have more money, that's really broad. If I gave you one rand today, you would have one rand more than you did a second ago. But that's probably not as much as you're wanting to grow in terms of financial success. So you need to be very specific with the numbers, with what you are looking for, with the details. I want a house. Well, you could probably get a house, but what kind of house do you want? Which neighborhood? So make that goal very specific. Make it measurable, which means as you get closer towards that goal, are you able to mark which means if you're able to get to that goal, and, uh, as you said, which means as you start to move towards that goal, can you measure points that are flag points? You know, so flags where you're like, yes, I've achieved this step towards that goal. I've achieved that step towards that goal. So you're actually able to look back and say, yes, with the energy I've put in, I am taking steps towards that goal. That's what measurable means. You need to be able to measure how close you're getting to that goal in order to know should you be putting more energy there or less energy there. So achievable means is it something you can actually do? So are you capable of doing it? Do you have the necessary resources? If you don't have the necessary resources to achieve a goal, then your goal needs to change slightly to first achieve those necessary resources in order to get your big smart goal. We'll talk about action plans later and this will really help understand the small steps towards taking a goal. And then relevant. We spoke about our why. Why are you moving towards this goal? And it's got to be something bigger than ourselves. You know, when we have a goal that's superficial and is driven by our own significance, we can get caught up in external validation, in burnout, but when we are aligned with the goal that is for a bigger purpose, to contribute towards the world, to leave a legacy behind, it's so much easier 
to stay persistent and consistent with that goal. So we want to make sure that whatever goal we create in our life, it's relevant to our main core why. That's going to keep us motivated long term. And then, of course, it's got to be time bound. So you don't want to have a goal with no end zone. Otherwise, you're just ever, ever, ever going to work for it. And again, it makes it very difficult to measure how close or how far you are to achieving that goal. So making it time bound allows you to put those markers in where in this at this time, so in a month's time, this is where I want to be with this goal. In six months' time, this is where I want to be. Now, most people overestimate what they're going to do in a year and underestimate what they can do in 10. So make sure that your goal is time-bound and you're able to measure how you are going along in that timeline. Then we want to talk about taking action. So again, even when you've created a SMART goal, it's very difficult to go towards that goal if you don't have an action plan. And again, an action plan is just making that goal more relevant, more achievable, more realistic, more specific. Because once you have an action plan, you have a step-by-step -step guide in order to follow towards your main goal, and towards that elevation, whatever it may be in your life. And so we use the TBM 5x5 five five method. So feel free to write this down. So in the 5x5 five five method, we talk about, first of all, creating our SMART goal. So remember, it's got to be a specific goal. It's got to be measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. And once you've created your SMART goal, you want to create five steps. So create five steps in order to... You want to create five steps. So this is five steps that you need to take in order to achieve that goal. You want to prioritize those steps from the things you need to do first to the things you need to do last in order for that goal to be achieved. Once you've done that, you're going to take each of those prioritized five steps and you're going to break each of them down into a further five steps to take. So step one is going to have five steps to take in order to achieve step one. Step two will have five steps to take in order to achieve step two and so on. You're going to prioritize those steps as well. And what you're going to have at the end of that exercise is a very clear roadmap and a very clear step-by-step guide for you to follow on a daily basis, a weekly basis, in order to make sure that you are consistently achieving steps towards your greater goal. And if you think of it, once you've got a SMART goal, you understand the goal, it's aligned with core why, and you have an action plan, what's really stopping you? Absolutely nothing but your mindset. And so once you take action, you've got your action plan, it becomes really easy to follow those step-by-step -step guides those step-by-step -step guides, especially with the TBM 5x5 five five method. And so we spoke about once you are starting on your journey. Now, any of you who have ever gone after a goal and had an action plan and you've done all the right things will know that life doesn't go according to plan. And the only certain thing about life is that it is absolutely uncertain. And even though you may have the best intentions to achieve your goal or go after a goal and you have a solid plan, life is going to throw you some curveballs. And that's when a lot of us want to quit or we think it's somehow destiny trying to minimize our potential to achieve that goal or it's a sign that we shouldn't go after that goal. And often what it is is those challenges, those obstacles that we come across while going after a goal, they're always going to come up in any goal, in any decision you make. Obstacles and challenges come up not to stop you, but to help you grow. So we have to reframe our mindset. We have to reframe looking at an obstacle and a challenge as something that's stopping us to an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to level up and become stronger and more knowledgeable in our journey. And so I told you earlier on about the Burgess Method 5x5 so the Burgess Method 5x5 five five Action Plan Tool. Now, when you come up with a goal and action plan and you come across an obstacle, you can use exactly the same tool to overcome an obstacle. So if there's a challenge, make overcoming that challenge a new goal and do the 5x5 five five method in order to overcome that, that challenge. And very quickly, you're going to see that that is a multi-level tool that you can use in all areas of your life, all aspects of your life. Every time there's a new goal or a new challenge to overcome, it's going to be an exciting tool for you to use in order to basically 
Give yourself a foolproof method. Now, a plan is only as good as somebody who follows it, but a leader is also able to function in chaos and adapt. So when you have an obstacle that is just really big and requires you to adapt your initial action plan, don't shy away from that. That's very normal. A plan is just there as a guideline towards your goal. And you are going to need to adapt that plan consistently as life throws your curveballs. You're going to need to take a different tack, a different perspective. That's totally okay. So when it comes to obstacles, reframe your mindset. Look at failures as opportunities to learn. Look at challenges as a growth mindset. What can you learn from that challenge? Or who do you need to connect with in order to understand that challenge better? And never underestimate the power of mentors. And when we talk about mentors, this is where we want to talk about the power of persistence. So a lot of people, again, a lot of people overestimate what they're going to do in a year and totally underestimate what they can do in two years or three years or 10 years. And so when it comes to persistence, you really want to look at mentors who inspire you. Now, I'm not talking about just your daily motivation. I'm talking about people who can help you lead yourself. And you always want to choose more than one mentor. Why? Because if you're going to lead yourself, if you only choose one mentor, you're essentially following somebody. So you're just following. But when you have multiple mentors that you're taking and choosing from their lessons and their memory bank in terms of what they've learned and their obstacles and how they've overcome them, what you're doing is you're personalizing your own leadership identity by having multiple mentors. Now, you don't want to overdo it, but generally five mentors is great. And again, you don't want to follow someone because nobody, and again, you don't just want to follow one person because one person is not enough for you to gain your own leadership identity. Alternatively, there'll be shortfalls in that person's life as well. We all have them in areas of our life. That's why we're constantly in this earth school, learning and educating ourselves. So we need to make sure that we have many mentors, about five mentors, where we're able to take essential tools from them and create our own identity to lead ourselves. And that creates persistence. When we aren't sure of something, when we don't know something, we can look to our five mentors for guidance. What would they do in this situation? And there I've just given the secret to a tool where if you are ever doubting yourself, if you're ever doubting the direction you need to go to in terms of achieving your goal and you think, I don't know how to carry on, you have your five mentors. You don't have to know these people personally. They can be inspirational people, celebrities you admire, motivational speakers you admire, businessmen or businesswomen that you admire. It can be mentors you've met personally, mentors you know close, or just mentors that you follow generally. You'll be able to pick up their patterns and their behavioral patterns. What you want to ask yourself when you come with and when you come up with an obstacle or something that's blocking you is what would this mentor do in this situation? What would this mentor do in this situation? And you want to go through each of your mentors and basically ask yourself, what would each of your mentors do in this situation? And what you would have designed right there is a very personalized action plan for yourself in order to understand, great, my five mentors who I believe are successful and powerful would have come up with these solutions. Which solution resonates most with you and your core why? And go for it and action it. Again, take the solution, make it a goal, use the TBM 5 by 5 method to break that goal down into an actionable plan and follow through. And those are just really, really easy steps in order for you to create life-changing breakthroughs. I hope this was super helpful for you and I'm so excited to share more tools with you in the future.